Thank you. Uh, thank you for participating in this call and this meeting. Uh, COVID-19 has kept us away from one another, but hopefully we'll be seeing each other um, sooner than later when the, um, of course, when, you know, when the numbers go down. Uh, continue to wear your mask and continue to uh, social distance also and have a safe and happy holiday. And we'll go into our uh, reflections by Reverend Graham. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, kind and loving God, we come to you this hour asking you for your blessings and help in our NPUJ monthly meeting. God, we pray for guidance in the matters at hand for the body and for the spirit of peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, thank you, Reverend Graham, so much. Ben, if you could pull up, uh, oh, we don't have the minutes. Um, could I get a motion to approve our October video minutes, please? in its entirety. This is Ben Norman. I make a motion to second. accept and approve the video minutes in its entirety. I second the motion for NASA Stanley. All right, the motion has been uh, approved and seconded. If there is no discussion, dis discussion uh, motion passes by unanimous consent. And Ben, could you pull up our um, agenda for tonight, please? If everyone could kind of just peruse over the um, agenda, those that can see it. All right, thank you. If I could get a motion to approve the um, agenda for December 2020 as printed, please. Madam Chair. Yes. I would like to make a motion to approve the agenda as printed. I second the motion. All right, Ms. Addy, you made the motion and Daniel, you second it. That is correct. Okay, if there's no discussion, um, the agenda has been approved and seconded and it passes. Uh, is anyone from ADP on the phone? I'm sorry, APD, Atlanta Police Department. Public safety. Hi, uh, Captain Ziggai. I'm on the I'm on the line. Okay, go right ahead, sir. Thank thank you for uh, joining. Yes, thank you. Good night. Uh, just want to welcome everybody and hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving and uh, looking forward to a nice Christmas and a happy New Year. Um, here to date, our crime in zone one is down negative 23% from last year's, and uh, that's remarkable for, for, for zone one and with everything, and I, I think a lot of it has to do, the officers are working hard, and some of it does have to go with COVID, um, a lot of people, a lot less people on the street. Um, last week was a very quiet week. Um, from what I'm looking at the stats, I'm having a little issue with my laptop here, but um, I don't think we had any major events in this area, in, in this MPU area. Um, I think it was extremely quiet. We only had 61 crimes last week through the whole entire zone one. So that's, that's remarkable. Um, is there any questions for zone one? All right, if there are no questions, could you leave your information in the, play, in the chat please, sir? Yeah, ma'am, I'm having a little difficulty for where I am. Um, I, for some reason, I'm having a, a hard time getting a signal. Um, could I just give you my email address and you can email me any questions you need or any, any issues that you need me to look into? Mm -hmm. I can drop it in there if you, if you give it to us now. We yeah, can. I'm having, for some reason, I, I'm having a hard time with uh, my internet. It's uh, SM 
Z Y G A J at Atlanta GA dot gov. Okay, let me read that back to you. S is in Sam, M is in Mike, Z is in um Zoo, Y, G is in George, A, J, you said? Yes. At Atlanta GA dot gov. Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you're looking for me in the Atlanta directory, I'm ZY. I'm the very last person. So don't start at the top, start at the bottom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I wish everybody a happy Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I look forward to seeing you next year, and I hope everybody has a very nice nice holiday season. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. Anyone from the fire department? The illustrious fire department, Atlanta Fire Department. No. Okay. Code enforcement. What about code enforcement? All right. What about the sweet team? I think I saw some. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hello. Good evening, everyone. I'm Officer Lawrence with the Sweet Team. Um, I'm filling in tonight for Officer Francis, uh, which will be your um, sweet officer for your area. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I really have tonight is um, I know it's this the season is for leaves. So if you have anything that's over 20 bags, it has to be scheduled for bulk collection. And um, you schedule that by calling 311. Um, if you have any items where I know everyone's home and everyone's cleaning out. So uh, we do offer the bulk service, but we ask that you call and schedule first and do not place the items out until the day before. Um, so basically sweet teams, we address all, we're basically code enforcement for solid waste services. So we address all uh, violations from the curve going back to about 10 feet. And we also do uh, illegal dumping and requests for those cleanups. So if anybody have um, any questions or concerns for me. Okay, they are picking up exactly. Okay, I see a question that popped up, but they're not picking up on Penelope. Um, is, is it a particular thing that they're not picking up? The individual that had a question from Penelope, could you um, I mute myself. answer? Yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead, Ms. Anissa. Um, they're not picking up large items, uh, you know, per the schedule time. Numerous people on Penelope in some areas, um, they have called, other people have called on behalf of those neighbors, and they're just not picking up. And then some area, they just ride by, and there's large piles of stuff on the street. So from the beginning of True Light all the way down to Anderson and Verbena. You know, they just bypassed it. Anderson and Verbena. Okay, so I just have um, one thing as it relates to that. So as long as they call and schedule through 311, um, they should be given a date and that's the date that the truck will actually come by and pick up those items. They won't pick that up during regular collection. We are aware of that I have the email. <laughs> okay. And they are not picking it up. We we've, we've been watching, so they're not picking it up. Okay. So I'll have some um um I'll forward this over to Officer Francis and I'm gonna put his um email in um here. Um but as it relates to them not coming at the scheduled time, if you would call 311 back uh or relay the message to have those citizens to contact 311 back and uh, we'll they'll send it out to us and we can kind of get it escalated as to see why those items have been picked up on the schedule date. Do anybody have any more questions or concerns? Okay, I'm gonna put Officer Francis email address in the, um, in the chat. Feel free to contact him about any questions or concerns as this relates to his area. 
but I'm going to pass over these locations to Officer Francis and um, the route supervisor. Okay, so Francis is our new um, point of contact now versus um, Gibbons and uh, Parham. Yes, it's well, okay. for Tyler West, it would be um, Officer Francis. Mm -hmm. Francis, okay, okay. Yes. Sorry. And I'm going to put his email into the In chat. The chat. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, ma'am. Any more questions or concerns? Okay. All, All right. right, I'm going Thank to leave this officer. email. Excuse right. me, can I ask one question? Yes. yes. What about the cases that have already been uh, uh, given to Officer Parham? Uh, how can we get statuses on them and where they are today? Officer Parham, um, that this will be with regular APD code enforcement. We're with solid waste. So uh, Officer Gibbons would have been that officer that would have probably had those cases. It wouldn't have been par hand. That would be APD code enforcement. And then we have solid waste code Great enforcement. Code enforcement yeah. mm -hmm. Reverend Graham, I have uh, Gibbons information. I can forward it to you. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. You can follow up with him. He's very responsive. Okay, thank you, okay. Officer Lawrence. All right, appreciate thank you. It. Have a good night. All right. All right, anyone else from the city um, watershed, if I'm missing anyone? Uh, 311 is here. 311, okay, go right ahead. Thank you. All right, hey guys. Hello. Hey, hey. so um, my name is Barbara Doherty. I'm the Community Affairs Coordinator for ATL 311. Um, 311 is the non-emergency call center for City of Atlanta services. Um, we're the number you dial to report things like potholes, leaks in the street, questions about your water bill and solid waste services. Um, if you need to open a code enforcement case or you need to report some park maintenance that needs to happen, right-of-way maintenance, um, all that good stuff, you can contact us. We'll get, um, we'll create a service request for you and get a work over order over to the department so we're kind of tracking an accountability um, we have we have about 50 agents they are working virtually they're working from home now um, did not miss a beat from the pandemic they are the answer they're answering about 3,000 calls a day um, they're available Monday through Friday 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can dial 311 inside the city limits. It works the same way as 911. You just dial 311. Um, if you have some issues, our full phone number is 404 546 0311. But if you do have issues getting through, just let me know because we should fix that. Um, you can also visit our website and report there at atl311.com. You can email us at atl311 at atlantaga.gov. Again, that email is atl311 at atlantaga.gov. Um, we have a pretty cool app in the App Store too, if you're interested in that. Um, there's a lot of good information on there about, um, you can search the map by a police precinct and zone and um, nearest fire station and MARTA stations and parks. Um, and you can also create a profile so that you can report things more quickly. We also have a very active social media team. So if you don't feel like waiting on the phone to talk to somebody, you can send us a message on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, Nextdoor, or Snapchat. And just send that to ATL311 to search for our profile. Um, that is pretty much it for me. I posted our contact information in the chat. Um, does anybody have any questions or concerns or, um, or service requests they need me to check up on? I. Is, can you tell the citizens how to um, follow up? Because like after they report something, how can they follow up or track it to make sure that um, the, um, you know, the request is taken care of? Sure. Um, so, on, you know, unfortunately, I do hear sometimes the, the tickets will be closed out and the work hasn't been completed. And if that happens to you, please contact me. I don't want that to happen to you. That's just not convenient or happy for anybody. So um, if you do have those issues with tickets getting closed out and maybe the work hasn't gotten done, sometimes, um, you know, once we get the ticket to the department, it is, um, you know, where it's a little bit out of our uh, house. So what I'm saying is if that happens to you and you need to follow up, please contact me. My city cell phone number that you can text or call me on is 470 six nine eight five one seven one 
Again, that cell phone number is 470-698-5171. And my name is Barbara. If you just need to call back to check on the status of a request, you can just do the same thing you did in the first place to contact us. Any of those ways on there, you can call back and say, hey, I'm checking on this service request number. That initial service request number will be given to you when you first report it. Okay, so just keep that keep that service request number because that's going to be the thing we can say, hey, this person reported this on this time and it went to this department and here's where it's at now, so. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Any other questions for Ms. Barbara? Yeah, Madam Chairperson, this is uh, Stacy Bowling from Making Away Housing. Mm -hmm. I have the only question I have is all, we have some great information being put in the chat, but we have a lot of people who called in and mm -hmm. not able to access the chat. So mm -hmm. will we be able to get that information to those people who call? Are you talking? Uh, yes. Oh, you're talking. Ben, how, how can we arrange for um, the people that called in to get the information? Like expe efficiently and expediently. Uh, I have the capability of downloading the chat comments and as a text file, we could possibly include that in a blast email uh, or put it up, post it on our website. Or maybe we would get one point of contact for your campus and then you guys can yeah. make sure it's disseminated out to everyone. How does that sound? Yeah, that, that would be amazing. I appreciate that you guys rock and you can send it to me and I'll make sure that everybody making the way gets it. Um, Liz has my information. Okay, thank you, um, Stacey. All right, you're welcome. Okay. Any other questions for uh, Barbara? Is she gone? I am not. I'm right here. Oh, you're not. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm not. I'm not gone. But if if y'all change your mind, um, you have my city cell, or you can contact the chairperson. Send me an email. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. Anyone else from um, the city? Any other representatives from the city? I don't want to overlook. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm from the solicitor's office. Um, real quick, the court is back open. So if you have a traffic citation um, or a concern that you need to address, the court is back open. However, it is limited capacity due to the pandemic. So um, if you have any questions or concerns about that, let me know. Also, if you did receive a traffic citation, um, but you don't um, want to go into court, there may be a possible diversion program that you can do to get your charge dismissed. It is based on your record and the charge. Um, so if you are have a concern or um, want to see if you're eligible, you can send me an email. I put my information in the chat box. Um, also, uh, I think that's all I have actually. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know or you can email me or text or call me. I have a question, Kier. So you're yes, only speaking for the uh, for traffic court, not um, Fulton not County. Housing. Yeah, not Fulton County. No, we just do. I mean, we do the housing violations, housing code violations, some criminal, but we don't handle felonies. We do some misdemeanors and then the city ordinance violations. So, you know, from the ordinance marijuana uh, possession, or we actually do the street racing stuff. Um, but we don't handle felonies or the or most misdemeanors. We handle some misdemeanors, and we do DUIs and the housing violations. Okay. Any questions or comments for um, Ms. Potter? All right. All right. Sounds good. Leave your information, and thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the city representing the city of Atlanta? Number five, we'll move on to the elected officials. Any elected officials on the line tonight? Any elected officials? Wow, no elected officials. Going once, going twice. All right. Number six, um, any committee reports? Are there any committee reports? All right, committee reports. Number seven, the planner report. 
Ms. Baker? Yes, I am here. Give me a second okay. while I turn on my video. Hey, thank you. All right. So I've got a couple things to report for the planner's report. Let me pull it up real quickly. All right. So um, the first thing um, is that in response to increased illegal construction, uh, construction activity during the pandemic, the Department of City Planning has ex expanded code enforcement for building and zoning. Um, to report illegal construction work or suspected uh, property violations, call 404-865-8550 or email code uh, bastardcp at atlantaga.gov. And I will drop this information um, and all the phone numbers that I talk about in the, um, in the chat box. Can you um, get Code Buster again, please? I'm sorry, Code Buster. Um, I will let, let me drop the information in the chat box, but the it's code buster dcp at atlantaga.gov. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. And then um, the second thing is that um, the department is currently working to expand the city's food truck program to allow for food trucks to operate in more commercial areas throughout the city. There will be a listening session on the proposed program in January and information will be distributed to the NPUs once the details are finalized. Email, um, you can email questions to Ben Camber at B-K-A-M-B-E-R at atlantaga.gov. And I'll also post that in the um, chat box. Um, and then the third uh, piece of information is that um, the department is finishing up the 2020 one neighborhood directory. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to send the contact information uh, for all 2021 NPU and neighborhood association officers uh, to mmcneil at atlantaga.gov um, uh, by December 18th, um, so by the 18th of December, um, to be included in the 2021 directory. I'll also put that um, email address in the chat box. Um, but then just to spell it out, it's M-M-C-N-E-A-L at atlantaga.gov. And then the fourth thing is that the Department of City Planning boards and commissions have announced their 2021 schedules. Uh, the Board of Zoning Adjustments, uh, Zoning Review Board, Tree um, Conservation, uh, con Conservation uh, Committee and um, Urban Design Commission have adopted their 2021 application that deadlines. Is, I, I don't want to be on camera. Um, application deadlines and meeting schedules, which can be found on the uh, Department Department of City Planning website. I will also drop that information in the chat. And that is it for the planner's report. Um, and then I'll be presenting soon um, the case that we have, the one case that we have. The legislation. Any questions for me? So I have a question. What is the uh, process um, when you do the call busters? Because there are um, in the neighborhood, we've seen uh, the construction people like building on houses and working on houses without permits. What if you're working on this COVID schedule uh, with nobody coming out? Reporting it to cold busters, what does that do? What does that process entail? Um, I am not sure about that information, but I can find out and let you know. Uh, but I'm sure they will make sure that they address it once you, uh, once it, if, uh, if somebody calls in, they'll make sure that maybe they send somebody to do a drive by at least and see what um, what is going on at the okay. site and probably okay. leave a violation notice. Okay, all right. Any other questions for uh, Ms. Baker? All right. Number eight, you can go into your um, matters for voting. Okay. So this is a um, piece of legislation that was um, presented last um, at our last meeting um, in October. 
um, and it's come back for vote. Back then it was, you know, just introducing it to the NPUs and then we can have more discussion about it as well as the vote for it today. So this is a matter for voting. Um, and what this is, is an ordinance by council member Howard Shook, um, Joyce Shepard, uh, JP Messinger, Gert, uh, Mike, uh, Michael, Julian, uh, Bond and Dustin Hills. Um, and this is a substitute ordinance to amend the 1982 Atlanta zoning ordinance as amended by adding a definition for short-term rentals um, and to prohibit short-term rentals as a use in the R1, uh, R2, R2A, R2B, R3, R3A, R4, R4A, R4B, R5, and PDH, which is Planned Development Housing, um, zoning districts um, for, um, and I'm gonna just go ahead and read the read out the um, sort of quick facts about um, uh, the this legislation. And so this leg legislation was um, it was drafted by the council members that I um, mentioned before um, to define short-term rentals and prohibit short-term rentals in the um, R1 through R5 districts as well as PD districts. Um, and why this was um, created. Um, the 1982 Atlanta Zoning Ordinance as amended sets forth the intent of single family districts to provide uh, for the protection of areas presently developed on large tracts of land to provide for development of recreational, religious and educational facilities as basic elements of a uh, balanced community and to encourage growth in a manner compatible with existing development. Further, um, single family districts permit a principal use of public schools through second um, schools through secondary level operated by the C Atlanta Board of Education, having no dwelling or lodging facilities except for caretakers, uh, single family detached dwellings and structures uh, and uses required for the operation of MARTA, but not include uh, including uses involving storage, train, uh, train yards, warehouse, um, switching at, or maintenance shops at, as the primary and purpose for the uh, quiet enjoyment of residents. Um, so further, um, the shared economy, um, the sharing economy is an eco economic model defined as a peer-to-peer -peer based activity of acquiring, providing, or sharing access to goods and services that is often facilitated by the community based on online platform. One of the most common known sharing economies is short-term rentals. However, since the business type has been operated operating in the city of Atlanta, they have been short-term rentals that have operated without incidents and residents are unaware that homes are being used. However, they have been incidences that have disrupted the quiet enjoyment of single family neighborhoods. Um, Short-term rentals have been used as locations for loud and lustrative parties um, where patrons pay a fee to attend indulge in alcohol and drugs, and in some instances have resulted in violent behavior that have resulted in homicides. Uh, what does this legislation propose um, to protect? Um, the legislation proposes to protect the health, safety, and welfare of uh, general public. Uh, this legislation proposes to regulate the use of short-term rentals. As proposed, uh, the legislation will define short-term rentals um, it, um, to include rentals of rental of residential dwelling units or accessory buildings for periods of periods of less than 31 consecutive days. Um, the use shall be prohibited in R1 through R5 districts and PDH zoning districts. And that is um, the quick facts. Uh, All right. I think um, the zoning committee has. Um, a recommendation out of committee if being the zoning chair could uh yes hi thank you okay uh yeah so we had a zoning committee meeting a couple of weeks ago to discuss this 
uh, issue in depth, we actually, uh, through the discussion, found a lot of various scenarios by which this particular legislation might cripple um, activities that it may not be intended to cripple. You know, we understand that it's intended to stop the party houses and mm -hmm. and the irres uh, irresponsible behavior. But um, the uh, out of committee, um, this is kind of the wording, I'll just kind of read it. Uh, we would like to motion to deny uh, for our MPU to, to vote to deny this legislation with the recommendation to rewrite the legislation to create a short-term rental permitting system to allow responsible property owners to continue with economic opportunities, uh, providing a uh, provided important short-term renters such as healthcare workers due to COVID-19, the film industry when film crews come into town for filming, displaced victims of natural disasters such as when Katrina happened and people flooded into Atlanta and professional responsible real estate investors. So we think the process of permitting the short-term rentals will allow the city to easily identify which properties uh, are being rented actively and it would allow for appropriate code enforcement. And then also if for some reason there's violators in that, they could, they could have that permit removed or revoked uh, if you will. So we think that that might be a better way to approach this uh, so that it doesn't cripple and have the unintended uh, uh, consequences with those other industries and, and potential short-term renters we discussed. Okay. So and what is the overall like motion? Cause that, the, the, <laughs> that was... All right, the motion is to, is to deny approving this legislation from city council, but for- I said but to go back and, you know, the, uh, with the with the recommendation for them to go rewrite it and represent it. I Can you that send me, send me that, um, uh, yes. what I'll you just read I'll, from I'll so that I can you. make sure I can include it in the records. Correct, I will send you the, the exact write-up. All right, thank you. All right, okay. so Ben made the motion and I believe yeah. Brandon yeah. made a um, second on the motion. So is there any discussion at this time? Okay, this is coming out of. Um... Sorry, I have a question real quick. Sorry, this is Tim. Oh, hi, Tim. Tim go ahead. Uh, I was. I don't, sorry, I missed the uh, zoning meeting. But is, is there an uh, exemption for a owner occupied home in the legislation right now, or no? No, um, the legislation just um, um, prohibits short term rentals in all districts, regardless of uh, well all the R districts as well as PDHs as residential okay. single family and both single family and uh, two family. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think my only thought on that would be that I would also like to see an exemption for owner occupied um, housing as well, just because that's, you know, that's not where parties are happening, <laughs> but that's all I'd say. Thank you. I agree with that. Yeah, I think the zoning committee hit the nail on the head that there would be much more unintended um, adverse economic effects of how it is currently written. And um, I agree that we should not pass it as written. Okay, well, we're ready to take a vote um, now. All of those who are in favor of um, this particular legislation, raise your hand or What's the other feature if you're dialed in? If you're dialed in at star nine to raise your hand. And if, if you're using the app, you have the underneath the participants window, you, there's the raise hand feature. And so- um, Excuse me, Ben, I have a point of order. Go ahead. Um, repeat your, your motion, Keona, please. Because I think you worded it in a certain way where we may be yeah. in trouble in voting it. So I think we should, I think we should so do the again first vote at how he said it because I said for it and I was thinking that nobody will vote. Right. Will... The, actually, the motion out of committee is to decline. Okay. So if you're in favor of declining the declining. motion, okay. Okay. that is in the affirmative. If you want the motion to pass or you, you want the legislation to pass, you would vote no. So it's reversed. Right. Okay. All so right. if you repeat his motion as written, 
so that people can get that in their head. All right, Ben, repeat your motion, please. Yeah, so the motion is to deny Z-20-69 as our recommendation uh, with with the recommendation for, for the city council to rewrite it. And if people are in agreement to what you just said, then please, you know, you're voting not in favor of, but you're voting to support to deny it, I guess, yes. if I'm making any sense, so. So if you're dialed in, it's star nine. That's very tempting, okay? Jane, uh, the second Sunday, Jane. And if we're on our computer you again. Your phone out, please. If you please mute your phone, please. Yeah. Okay. Is there a question? Yeah, this is Jess. I can't find the button to raise my hand. I know I've done this before, it, but I do not it, see it. I click on the participants and then the participant window opens up and at the bottom of that, it is raise hand. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right, Ben, you want to tally those votes? Yeah. All right. All right. Everybody got their hand raised? I'm going to start counting. Let's see. Okay. I have 27, um, I have 27 count. Hello? We're in the middle of uh, doing a, a motion and taking votes. Please hold your question. I think more hands were raised. All right, well, let me recount. It looks like some people still raising their hand. All right, 28. All right, are you doing the phone votes too? Because there are some people on the phone. Yep, yep. Yeah, we have some people dialed in to raise their hand with the star nine. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm gonna lower everybody's hands. So, that's, all right, Kiana? Yes. Yeah, so, all right, I guess uh, anyone who is opposed to our recommendation to deny, raise your hand. So, if, you, if you're in support of banning short-term rentals, raise your hand, per the way the legislation's written. Right. Okay, star nine if you're dialed in or raise hand. I see no raised hands except uh, uh, one. I see one. Or, well. All right, I see no raised hands currently. All right. All right, did everyone have the opportunity to vote? Because we're about to close the vote. Oh, any abstentions? Any abstentions? This is Virgil, I abstain. This yeah, is Kiana, I abstain also. Ben Norman, I abstain. So it's three abstentions. So we have 28 uh, voting to uh, recommend to deny the legislation as written, uh, zero uh, to approve it, and three abstentions. All right, so the motion carries. And, and uh, Ben, if you could, yes. um, I just put my email in the chat. If you could send yeah. that to me because I need to send out the report yep. tomorrow morning. If you could send that to me, it's maybe after the meeting or something. I'll send it right now. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, great. 
Can I ask a question from the zoning department before we move on? Yes. Yes. Um, so this Atlanta city design virtual book, um, it came out of the city planning department. Could you give us some insight on how to read that? Um, is this, you know, <laughs> a document? Is this, should we expect, you know, major zone reform? What does this, what does the book mean and how should we read it? Um, so the Atlanta city design um, is kind of like a, a guide of how um, Atlanta is to be, you know, um, designed uh, in the sense of from a design perspective. And so as we are redoing the CDP, actually we're going to be looking to the Atlanta uh, city design to make sure that we align some of the goals that are in that document with the um, CDP that is going to be um, com comprehensive development plan that is going to be written soon. So, um, and we use it, um, we personally use it in our um, staff reports when we write, um, uh, our reports for ZRB or BZA, we include um, ideas from there because um, it's just a guide of how um, central ideas of how Atlanta can be designed um, in terms of comprehensively. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any, Any other, other questions? <clears throat> questions for Ms. Baker? Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Any other questions for Ms. Baker? All right, thank you. Thank you. Are there any um, really quick three minutes as we have time neighborhood presentations? Any neighborhood presentations? We'll start with Center Hill. Center Hill. If no one else is on, uh, we have a neighborhood cleanup uh, this Saturday from 10 to 12, meet at the intersection of Woods and DLH. There'll be uh, gloves and bags and stuff to pick up uh, trash. You can also sort of eat. I think that's been posted to Nextdoor in our Facebook page too. All right. Thank you, Chris. Any report from Dixie Hills? Any report from Grove Park? All right, any report from Harville Homes? No report. Thank you. Any report from Penelope Neighbors? Yes, this is Anissa. Uh, Penelope Neighbor is rescheduling an event that was supposed to take place October the 9th, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. or with City Council, Councilman Brown passing out essential items. Um, we changed the date because it was raining really bad that day and we were gonna be outside. So we are working with his office to reschedule that event where we will be giving away essential items, um, gloves, face masks, hand sanitizers, and also some food. And we will be sending out an email. So if you are on this call and you don't think we have your updated email address, if you can privately send me your email address, that would be great. Also, Penelope Neighbor is working on its first of the year meetings going virtually 100% because it seems like it's gonna be the new norm. So we will be emailing that information out to you um, in the next few weeks. Myself and Virgil is working on some things for us to move forward in 2021 virtually. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Urban Villa Pine Acres. Okay. The Westlake community. Um, all right. Item number. 10 being old business. Is there any old business? No. Any new business? Going once, going twice. All right, number 12, uh, announcements. 
Ms. Um, Mrs. Addie Calhoun would like to make an announcement on behalf of the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, nominating committee. Yes, good evening all. On behalf of the nominating committee, the 2020 nominating committee of the NPU, first gratitude is expressed to all who were willing to accept nominations for the office of NPUJ. It was a very tedious task to fill the slate of officers for recommendation to the body. We received some very impressive biological information and expressions of intent to serve our community from most of those who initially accepted the nomination for the office. It is unfortunate that at this time, we are still awaiting some very pertinent information that is required as a part of the selection of our chairperson. This is not a new process that the NPU has had to undergo, but resentfully, we find ourselves in the situation again. We would like to be able to make sure that the elected voices of the members of the NPU are heard fairly and accurately, as well as within accordance with our bylaws. One area that we have requested, as the city of Atlanta would also request, is the verification of the primary address of the chairperson elect as required by the bylaws as set before in Article 4, Sections 3 and 9, and Section 6-3017 of the Elections of the City of Atlanta Ordinance. The chairperson elect, as of now, is Ms. Elizabeth Thompson, proud owner of a million dollar business within our community, making a way housing incorporated, serving our community by providing emergency and transitional housing for persons facing complex challenges. Ms. Thompson has indicated that she has an apartment within the business and spends approximately 80% of her time at the business. We still have not received any documentation that Ms. Thompson resides in the community, although the information has been requested more than once. The problem is not just if Ms. Thompson's primary residence would be that of the Making a Way Housing Corporation. The problem would be that the address of a business would not be accepted by the city as it was not accepted with our former situation of the same sort. A concern with the election process has also risen. The concern regards the counting of votes for a business. According to our bylaws, Article 3, Section 1, a member or a business would only be allowed one vote. We were not able to document the residency of those voting at the November meeting mainly because of the number of persons who were in attendance for the first time. There should have been only one vote from the business and not from each of the persons from the business. The possibility of multiple voting would invalidate the NPU's November election. All persons are welcome to attend and participate, but only one vote per business is allowed. At this time, it is regretful that documentation to the appropriate officials with our city will be forwarded for further review and request that this matter be resolved as soon as possible. This was an update from the non-standing nominating committee of 2020 to be placed on file. All right. Thank you, Ms. Eddie. And um, number 13, we'll adjourn this meeting at uh, 7.50 and everyone have a safe and um, a very happy holiday. Enjoy yourselves um, and stay safe. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye.